The following is a feature presentation of Television Sports USA, the Mislu Television Network. From Watkins Glen, New York, this is the 1980 Toyota Grand Prix of the United States. For the 22nd time, the world's finest Formula One drivers battled for the checkered flag on one of the world's toughest racetracks. This program is brought to you by Toyota, who invites you to see all the 1981 cars and trucks at your local Toyota dealers. Oh, what a feeling to drive a Toyota. And by Valvoline, all kinds of weather, all kinds of driving. Valvoline is the motor oil that's not just for winning races. Hi, everybody. From Watkins Glen, New York. I'm Don Earl, your host for this afternoon's 22nd annual Toyota U.S. Grand Prix from Watkins Glen, New York. This would have been uh, the final race, is the final race, but would have been the run for the World Drivers' Championship had not Alan Jones nailed that down in the Canadian Grand Prix up in Quebec. However, uh, there's a lot of stories this afternoon as over 70,000 fans are on hand on a cool autumn day to view the running of this afternoon's Grand Prix from Watkins Glen. And uh, to tell us about some of those other stories in this afternoon's race is Anthony Marsh, International Grand Prix race announcer. And Anthony, uh, Alan Jones is this year's 1980 championship driver, but a lot of other stories are unfolding in the pits for this afternoon's race. Yeah, the big story, of course, is Bruno Giacomelli on the pole for the first time in his career. This young Italian has been steadily developing his own driving in the Marlboro Alfa Romeo car, and at last they've got it on the pole, the biggest thing that's happened to them. And the other thing is Nelson Piquet, who so nearly got the world championship, he just lost out in Canada last week, but he's on the front row alongside Bruno Giacomelli, and he so wants to win this race. If he couldn't have the championship, at least he'd like to win the last race in the series. But Alan Jones wants to crown his championship with a win here. He's on the third row, but I've seen Alan win from further back than that. So I think those are the things to watch for especially. Okay, and we'll be uh, talking with Anthony Marsh, and he'll be talking with drivers later on in the show. And right now, let's go to Paul Mann, who'll be calling all of the exciting racing action from Watkins Glen. Thank you, Don. We've got 24 cars going into the Toyota Grand Prix of the United States this afternoon. The race will be 200 miles long, 59 laps of this 3.37-mile circuit. 11 turns to the lap, many changes of gear, a very difficult course for the best Grand Prix drivers. Jochen Maas of West Germany, winner of the 1975 Spanish Grand Prix. Jody Schechter of South Africa, 1979 world champion and retiring after this race. Derek Daly of Dublin, Ireland, former Formula 3 champion, looking for his first Grand Prix victory. Jean-Pierre Jarier of France, driving in Formula 1 since 1971, a record holder here at Watkins Glen. Emerson Fittipaldi of Brazil, a two-time world champion, former Grand Prix winner here at the Glen. Ricardo Patrese of Italy, former Formula 3 European champion, only 26 years old. Eddie Cheever, American, 22 years old, driving in Formula 1 for the first year this year. Very quick. Gilles Villeneuve, French-Canadian, won here at the Glen last year in his Ferrari. Rupert Keegan, a British champion driver, has competed in Formula One since 1977. Kiki Rosberg from Finland, third in Argentina, fifth in Italy this year, very fast. Alain Prost of France, withdrawing today because of a practice injury. He'll be replaced by Dutchman Jan Lammers. Jacques-Henri Lafitte from France, winner of the 1980 German Grand Prix at Hockenheim. Mario Andretti, 1978 world champion, only the second American ever to win the championship, now 40 years old. Andrea De Cesaris of Italy, this is only his second Grand Prix, qualified 10th. John Watson, Irishman, 34 years old, sixth at Watkins Glen last year. Hector Rabacke of Mexico, sixth at the Canadian Grand Prix in Montreal. Didier Peroni of France, winner of the 1980 Belgian Grand Prix and third here at the Glen last year. Alan Jones, the new 1980 world champion from Australia, winner of four Grand Prix this year. 
Rene Arnoux of France, driving the only turbocharged car in this race, winner of two Grand Prix in the Renault L. Carlos Reutemann of Argentina, two-time Glenn Grand Prix winner, won Monaco this year. Elio De Angelis of Italy, teammate to Mario Andretti in the Lotus team. Nelson Piquet of Brazil, nearly world champion this year, won three Grand Prix. And finally, Bruno Giacometti of Italy, fastest qualifier here at the Glen for the first time in his career. And there is Jan Lammers in the number 14 Unipart Enzyme making his way toward the rear of the grid. As we said, he'll replace Alain Prost. You saw the guard starting gantry. There's Giacomelli. The field is away. Giacomelli darting to his left to position himself for the first 90-degree right-hander. PK right behind him. There's a lot of jostling in the back, a lot of dust being thrown up. And Alan Jones has gone off on the right-hand uh, side of the circuit, as have Andrea De Cesaris and Rene Arnoux. Giacomelli quickly taking the lead as they flash through the chicane. Jones, who started from fifth position, has now fallen back to 14th place. There's the leader, Giacomelli. Second is Nelson Piquet in number five. Here come your leaders, Giacomelli and Piquet. Giacomelli in the number 23, Marlboro Alfa Romeo. Nelson Piquet right behind him in the number five, Carmelat Brabham. Bad luck for Alan Jones in the first turn in the 90 as he skated off the track, and that may have damaged his skirts. He may not be able to continue in the race. We'll have to wait and see. In any case, he's got a long drive ahead of him if the car is undamaged. Giacomelli getting off to a splendid start, although he overshot the line just a little bit. PK suffered from wheel spin. There they are, one and two. Giacomelli leading in number 23. This is the first time that this Italian driver has led a Grand Prix. Starting from pole position, he qualified at a time of just over one minute and 33 seconds. This race will be just over, just under, I should say, 200 miles. Giacomelli clipping the verge there, completing the first lap. Second is Nelson Piquet. Third is Carlos Reutemann in number 28. He's the teammate of Alan Jones in the Saudi Leyland Williams. Fourth is D.J. Peroni in number 25. Fifth is Elio DeAngelis in number 12. Sixth is Rebecca in number six. Seventh is Watson in number seven. In eighth is Jacques Lafitte. Ninth is Mario Andretti. Here again is your leader, Bruno Giacomelli, in the V12 Alfa Romeo. This is the first time this car has led a race. Bruno paying a tribute to his tragically killed teammate Patrick Depaye in the German Grand Prix this year. The leader's already drawing away. Giacomelli and Nelson Piquet. Piquet looking for his fourth Grand Prix victory of this 1980 season. He just barely lost the championship in Canada at Montreal. Along this straightaway now, the speeds are getting up to 170 miles an hour. These cars are particularly fast in the corner. Very, very fast cornering speeds because of their aerodynamic ground effects. They maintain a vacuum underneath the car, and that makes them very fast through the turns. A crowd of 70,000 watching this race. Giacomelli leading it beautifully, hasn't made a mistake yet. Very difficult for a new driver to lead a Grand Prix for the first time, and especially when he's being harried by someone as experienced as Nelson Piquet. The weather here at Watkins Glen is cool, overcast, perfect racing weather. Giacomelli now in his third lap, nipping through the chicane. A tight right left. A choke point to slow the cars down before they head on on the straightaway. This straightaway is a 2% grade uphill, about two-thirds of a mile long. Giacomelli and PK pulling away from the field. Reutemann is still third. Peroni fourth. DeAngelis fifth. Rebecca is sixth. Watson seventh. Lafitte eighth. Andretti ninth. Keegan is tenth. Alan Jones has moved up into ninth. Alan Jones has moved from 14th to ninth place. So apparently Jones' car was not damaged when he skated off turn one at the start of the race. We may see a tigering drive now from Alan Jones as he tries to regain the distance he lost when he got involved in the melee at the beginning of the event. Here's the leader, Bruno Giacomelli, 27 years old, born 10 September 1952. This is the first time he's even led a Grand Prix, much less won one. 
He's still being followed very closely by PK, but PK is watching and waiting. He's not really pushing hard on Bruno Giacomelli. We'll be back with more racing from the Glen after this timeout. Paul Mann, back to the action here at the Glen. There you see the Marlboro Alfa Romeo of Andrea de Cesaris of Italy. He's just retired from the race after colliding with the Candy Tyrrell of Derek Daly. Andrea de Cesaris, in only his second Grand Prix, driving up the backside of Derek Daly. And there you see Derek Daly walking dejectedly away from his car. Both cars out of the race, cars number four and 22. The leader, still Bruno Giacomelli, driving a beautiful drive on a lovely, cool autumn day here at Watkins Glen. Giacomelli in the number 23, Marlboro Alfa Romeo, has led this race from the beginning. Second is Nelson Piquet in number five. Giacomelli, an Italian, leading his Grand Prix for the first time. This is the first time he's led a Grand Prix, the first time that he started from pole position. There you see the candy Tyrrell of Jean-Pierre Jarier, number three, in the pits with spark box problems. Jarier having ignition problems. Back to the leader. Bruno Giacomelli. Driving number 23, Marlboro Alfa Romeo. Second, Nelson Piquet of Brazil. Giacomelli seeking his first Grand Prix victory. Nelson Piquet, his fourth of the 1980 Grand Prix season. Giacomelli has about a three-second lead over Piquet. Third is Carlos Reutemann in number 28. Fourth is DJ Peroni. Peroni driving a Ligier Giton. Fifth is Elio DeAngelis in a Lotus. Sixth, John Watson in a McLaren. Seventh, Alan Jones. Alan Jones driving up through the field, having fallen back to 14th place after a first lap, first turn incident. And he's climbing steadily and uh, almost certainly will be threatening for the lead. It will be interesting to see if Alan Jones can fight his way back up to behind Bruno Giacomelli. Right now, everything running like clockwork on Giacomelli's number 23 Marlboro Alfa Romeo. Giacomelli drove in Formula 3 race before he came to Formula 1. He made his Formula 1 debut in 1978 for McLaren in the British Grand Prix, where he finished 7th. He drove this Alfa Romeo car at the end of 1979 in its debut with a V12 engine. He did not finish here at the Glen last year because of a first lap accident. So far, he's been driving away from the field with the exception of Nelson Piquet of Brazil. Giacomelli captured pole time with 1 minute 33.29 seconds, 130.315 miles per hour. A new race record here at Watkins Glen, and he accomplished that feat in spite of the fact that there are 13 new patches of track, new patches of tarmac on this 3.37 mile circuit. So in some places, it's very smooth and very slippery. Nevertheless, Bruno Giacomelli has set a new lap record and has led this race from the beginning. There you see him once again flashing down the pit straightaway, a short squirt where they get up to about 150 miles per hour, and then head into a very hard right 90 degree turn. There you see the third place car, Carlos Reutemann. Fourth is DJ Peroni. Fifth, Elio DeAngelis. There's Peroni. Followed by DeAngelis. Rene Arnoux, number 16, Reno, is also having a great afternoon. He fell back after that first turn incident as well. He's driven from 20th to 14th place in just 10 laps. There you see PK lapping Jarier's Candy Tiro. Candy is an Italian domestic appliance manufacturer. Reutemann getting by him now. Jarier, as we said, has been having ignition problems. Bruno Giacomelli still leading, going through the anvil. One of the more difficult parts of the course. In this natural amphitheater, excellent for spectating, as the cars double back on themselves. Nelson Piquet there, the number five Parmalat Bravo. Parmalat, not the name of the car. Parmalat, an Italian dairy products manufacturer. The car is a Brabham, an English-made car. There's number six, Hector Rabacke in the pits. He's got an engine problem. He's also had some tire changes today. Bruno Giacomelli leading the 1980 Toyota Grand Prix of the United States. He's led it since lap one. No one else at this point is threatening him, although should he have problems, Nelson Piquet is lying in wait at number five. Alan Jones still moving up through the field. Jones was ninth on lap three, eighth on lap four, 
eighth on lap eight. He's jockeying now with John Watson for seventh position. Giacomelli with about a four and a half second lead. And there you see Ricardo Patrese, who has crashed into the catch fencing. Patrese is trapped in his number 29 Vorsteiner Arrows. He's trying desperately to get out of the car as a marshal cuts him out. The drivers ask for the catch fencing as a safety measure to slow the cars down when they leave the track, but sometimes they get wound up in this chicken wire like catch fencing. Ricardo Patrese still trapped in his number 29 Porsche Diner Arrows. There you see the second and third place cars, Nelson Piquet and Carlos Reutemann lapping Emerson Fittipaldi. Piquet and Reutemann, I beg your pardon, they lap Kiki Roseberg in the number 21 Skoll Fittipaldi. That's the second place car, number five, Nelson P.K. A battle going on for second place, Reutemann closing hard on P.K. Reutemann would like to earn his third Grand Prix victory here at Watkins Glen. He won here in 1978 for Ferrari and 1974 for Brabham. And Ricardo Patrese is out of his car. Patrese is out of his car. More racing from the Glen after this timeout. Chester, a lady in my condition would like an automatic. A bank account in our condition needs high gas mileage. Introducing a car. Watkins Glen, you just saw Nelson Piquet flash by your screen, chased heavily by Carlos Reutemann and DJ Peroni. A great battle going on for places second through five. Alan Jones has moved up through the field. He's now fifth behind DJ Peroni, and Piquet has spun out. Piquet in second place has spun out and crashed into the catch fencing on turn one. This has been a bad day for drivers in turn one. Nelson Piquet in second place, looking for his fourth Grand Prix victory, has retired involuntarily after spinning out in the first turn. He's about five seconds behind the leader, Bruto Giacomelli in the Marlboro Alfa Romeo. Getting a little sideways there on that turn, recovering quickly. Alan Jones has won four Grand Prix this year. He wants to make the U.S. Grand Prix five. Can he catch Bruno Giacomelli? There's the leader, Bruno Giacomelli. Can Alan Jones catch this car? The number 23, Marlboro Alfa Romeo. Remember that the Marlboro Alfa Romeo is a heavier car. Alan Jones's car, the Saudi Leyland Williams, is much lighter. In fact, it's considered to be the lightest car in Grand Prix racing these days, with the possible exception of the Parmalat Brabham, which you saw Nelson P.K. spin out just a couple of laps ago. Giacomelli running a V12 engine. Alan Jones running a V8 engine. Alfa Romeo makes its own engine. Alan Jones is running a V8 Cosworth Ford. A Ford block prepared by a British concern called Cosworth. And Giacomelli is slowing dramatically. Giacomelli is pulling off. Giacomelli in the anvil has come to grief on the 31st lap. He's in the middle of his 32nd lap. He's going slower and slower. He appears to be coasting downhill now, and Alan Jones will take the lead. Heartbreak time for Bruno Giacomelli, retiring after 31 and a half laps. And it appears he has no chance to rejoin the race. He's retired about half distance from the pits. It would be impossible for him to push back. He's lost too much time. And here we see our leaders, one and two, the Saudi Leylands of Alan Jones and Carlos Reutemann, about to lap Rupert Keegan in car number 50. Once again, the Saudi Leyland Williams cars are running one, two in a Grand Prix. Keegan getting off into the dirt. Jones moving sharply and briskly to the right. The lap is back marker. Rupert Keegan lying 10th. Sandwich between the Saudi Leylands. So, a tremendous reversal in fortunes for Bruno Giacomelli. Alan Jones very, very lucky not to have damaged his car in that first turn excursion. There you see a very disappointed Giacomelli looking at the engine of his car, throwing his head back in disappointment. There's the leader, Alan Jones. Lady Luck is with him today in the number 27 Saudi Leyland. Jones has about 27 laps to go. The race is a little bit better than half over. Alan Jones has the lead. Here he's lapping Gilles Villeneuve, the French-Canadian driver in the red Ferrari. Jones lapping the back cars very swiftly with no problem. Villeneuve, the winner here last year in a car that's been much slower during the 1980 season.
a superb and well-judged drive through the field performed by Alan Jones. Driving from 40th to first place in just 31 and a half laps, inheriting the lead from Bruno Giacomelli, and so, of course, unfortunately, we'll never know what would have been the outcome of a duel between these two. But nevertheless, you have to give Jones a great deal of credit for a well-timed charge. And here's the crew, the Saudi Alayland crew with Frank Williams in the white hat and the visor. He's the genius behind this team, along with designer Patrick Head, Frank Durney. There's the leader, Alan Jones in number 27. Sponsored by Saudi Airlines and the British manufacturing company, Leyland. The leader is Alan Jones, second is Carlos Reutemann. We'll have more racing from the Glen after this timeout. The skittering off the course in turn one at the start of the 1980 U.S. Grand Prix, and this shows you just how close he came to losing all the marbles right here. Now we find him in the lead, having climbed up through the field after 32 laps. Inheriting the lead from Bruno Giacomelli. And there he is, Alan Jones, the leader in number 27, the Saudi Leyland Williams. Just about to lap Mario Andretti, who's down in sixth position in number 11, the Team Essex Lotus. There they go, down through the anvil. Alan Jones, the 1980 world champion, can pick off his fifth victory here. He's been the winner at Argentina, France, Brands Hatch in Britain, and at the Canadian Grand Prix. He was second in Belgium, Austria, and Imola. Third at Brazil and Germany. He's had three pole positions this year. Alan Jones has had an excellent record of reliability, as has his teammate uh, Carlos Reutemann, who is now second in the Saudi Leyland number 28. Reutemann has finished in the points in every race in the last nine races. There's the leader, Alan Jones, just about to lap Jochen Maas in number 30, the Warsteiner Arrows. Reutemann second right there there he is number 28 lying third is DJ Peroni in the Ligier Giton fourth Elio DeAngelis number 12 Team Lotus fifth John Watson in number seven sixth Jacques Lafitte in number 26 Mario Andretti the American champion is now seven Mario Andretti in number 11 is now seven back to the leader Alan Jones in the Saudi Alayland You'll see the word Albalad painted on that car. Albalad is the name of the Royal Trading Company through which the royal family of Saudi Arabia carries out all of their business transactions. Overall, the car is sponsored by Saudi Airlines. You'll also see other strange names on the car, like Technique Avant-Garde, or TAG, T-A-G. This is a firm based in Paris. It deals in aviation and electronics. There you see the red car, the red Alfa Romeo, of Bruno Giacomelli, up in the middle of your screen, off to the right, just where he parked it after 31 and a half laps. He retired with ignition problems. He lost all the electrics on that car after leading from the fall of the green flag. No one except Nelson Piquet had really challenged uh, Bruno Giacomelli, and Piquet himself retired after a spin in turn one. So the leaders, numbers 27 and 28, Alan Jones and Carlos Reutemann. Reutemann from Argentina, a two-time winner of the U.S. Grand Prix, and if Alan Jones should retire for some reason, Carlos Reutemann, his teammate, would be right there to right there to pick up the lead for it. Down along the straightaway, he's closing in toward victory now in this 59-lap race. Here's an interview with Jody Schechter and colleague Anthony Marsh. Jody Schechter, the 1979 world champion, this is your last race for Ferrari, your last Grand Prix. How much does it mean to you? Well, I think it's... Uh, I think in one way it's... Uh, it's the last race. I mean, it's a sentimental race for me because, in fact, my first Grand Prix was here at Watkins Glen in 72. And now my last Grand Prix is here in Watkins Glen. And uh, the thing is that I've won the world champion. I retired as world champion, but... We've had a very bad season this year, and uh, I would like, although I'm uh, not doing well, I would like to end my career uh, the same way as I... Three laps behind the leaders, 
riding his last race for Ferrari. As you heard him say, he drove his first race here at Watkins Glen in 1972. That year, he was at the wheel of a McLaren, and he finished ninth in his Grand Prix debut. Jody Schechter with 10 career wins in a 111 starts. It's been a difficult season for him. His best placing of this year was only a fifth at Long Beach. He's qualified in the top 10 only twice, and he never qualified among the top five this year. Here again is the leader of the Toyota Grand Prix, Alan Jones, the new world champion from Australia. They're very smooth and very slippery. Alan Jones now only a mile from Pedro, only a mile from his fifth victory of the 1980 season, the sixth victory for the Williams team of Great Britain. It appears his teammate Carlos Reutemann will finish second for a beautiful 1-2 conclusion to the 1980 Formula One Grand Prix season here in North America. There you see Alan Jones coming through, and he's about to take the final 10th and 11th turns on the track and accept the checkered flag for the U.S. Grand Prix victory here at Watkins Glen. The flag is unfurled, and Alan Jones is the winner of the 1980 United States Grand Prix. Alan Jones, the winner from Australia. Second, Carlos Reutemann. Third, Didier Peroni. Fourth, Elio De Angelis. Fifth, Jacques Lafitte. Mario Andretti finishes sixth. Now let's go to Victory Circle, and Anthony Marsh talks with the winner, Alan Jones. That was great fun to watch. Yeah, it wasn't good fun to do. Anyway, here we are then, another win. You must be very, very pleased. It really finishes off your championship year. Rounds it off nicely, yeah, I'm delighted. Thank you very much, Alan. And now, Rene Dreyfus will present the beautiful bowl to Alan Jones. In behalf of the Toyota US, I'm glad to give you a second cup. You got the one for the World Championship. This is a good confirmation. Congratulations to you. So, Rene Dreyfus, the Grand Marshal, the great French racing driver, the winner of the 1930 Monaco Grand Prix, among many other races, presents the Toyota Grand Prix Winners' Cup to Alan Jones here at Watkins Glen. Well, there you have it. Alan Jones has capped his world championship with a win here in the 1980 Toyota U.S. Grand Prix here in Watkins Glen, New York.